Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? I've got one for you today. Now, we've covered 1 Corinthians 3 before. I did a video about sectarianism. And it's very, very bad. Most churches are in this state today. If you go to any church, you'll see multiple levels of sectarianism going on. But there's something deeper in this particular chapter that helps us understand the importance, or I should more would be more appropriate to say the lack of importance, in a way, that the work that we do is. Unless we have the Lord backing it. Now we've read about this, the he who plants, he who waters, it's God that provides the increase. There's a deeper understanding here. Because I can't sit here and say I'm important because I have a YouTube ministry. Somebody else can't sit there and say, well, I'm important because I'm a pastor of a church. Somebody else can't sit there and say, well, I'm important because I'm a missionary. You know, none of our individual jobs isolate us or, or draw us out and lift us up above any other ministry. Uh, there, are people, there are people that will tell you, well, this ministry is better than this one. No, there's not. No ministry is better than any other ministry. The secret is, is because God is the one that provides for that ministry. I'll show you what I mean. There's, there's two spots here. We're going to cover a few verses in 1 Corinthians, but then there's one in 2 Corinthians that validates it. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. We're in 1 Corinthians 3. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. There's a reason why they can't receive it. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like men? They had an argument going on he had to address. And this is the argument. For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? See, the reason why they were doing that, they were like, well, I was baptized under Apollos. Uh, I'm, I'm, at, I'm up from him. Oh, really? Oh, well, Apollos isn't an apostle. I'm from Paul. I was back, I was brought in from, from Paul. So he's an apostle, so I'm better. See, this, is, this goes back to the whole thing about baptism as a requirement for salvation. Okay, well, what are the qualifications? And they'll, they'll say, well, did you get baptized in the Jordan? We went over there. We got baptized in the Jordan. Did you wash your clothes afterwards? That's a dirty river. You know, and then they'll look at you horrified like that, that should mean something. It means nothing. That if, if you stood in the literal exact spot Christ stood when he was baptized, that doesn't make your baptism any more important than somebody getting baptized in a bathtub in Watts in somebody's house, one of the poorest areas in the, in the world, or somewhere, you know, some neighborhood in Detroit. It makes no difference. Well, the same thing applies here. Oh, you were brought in under Paul? You were brought in under Paul? Yeah, you're both the same. That doesn't make you any different. And it doesn't make those men's work any different either. That brought you in. You're alienating other people and self-elevating. And this is one of the dangers that we have to get away from when you take one qualification or, or something, that action or whatever, and put it above another. That's why the works that we do, the things that we do, don't matter. It's what God does that matters. Watch. This is, this is really going to blow your mind. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. There's nothing special about these two men. They, they shared the same message. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Now here's the mind blower. And we're going to see it in Second Second Corinthians. Or sorry, uh, yeah, in Second Corinthians. We're going to see that in Second Corinthians. Neither Paul nor Apollos could plant or water unless God provided. Watch, this is going to be cool. Watch this. God gives the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. And here's the mind blower. The only way they could plant or water is if God gave them the seed in the water in the first place. Paul became Paul, and God gave him the seed to go plant. 
Apollos became Apollos, and God gave him the water to go water. See, you can't take a slave and make him above another slave. Okay, servants. You two servants come here. Go to that field. You plant it. And I want you to go behind him and water it. But what are they going to do? They're going to stand there and look at you like you're stupid. What am I going to plant? Oh, that's right. You need seed. Here, here, take this seed and go plant. Um, what am I going to water with? Oh, that's right. Here, here's some cans. You can go water with it. Neither of these men could do what they do unless God gave them the stuff to go do it. And here's what's funny is it always starts with God and then it ends with God because God is the one who provides the increase. Because when it's all done and the harvest comes in, God brings the increase to the men. Here you go. God is the one that makes it grow. We spend so much time getting ourselves caught up in our own activities and what we're doing. Oh, I'm doing this for the kingdom. I'm doing that for the kingdom. Well, that's pride. I'm doing nothing for the kingdom because unless God is the one enabling me, I can do nothing for the kingdom. So what I do is irrelevant. What I do means nothing because anybody can do it. There's millions and millions and millions of us. Anybody can plant. Anybody can water. There's only one God. And all things are provided from him. And all things go to him. And the increase is provided by him. Let's keep reading. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Notice it mentions nothing about being successful in their labor. It's just the labor. How successful you are is irrelevant. A lot of people like to lift people up and say, that person led 87 people in his life to Christ. Great. What, where's the one that led one person? Where's the person that led nobody? I want to go talk to them. And encourage them. See, I can't recall anybody that I've specifically led to the Lord by name. Now, I know there's many people that have come to this channel and have gotten, received much revelation. And some of y'all are taking my videos and sharing them and you're leading people to Christ, planting and watering it. Perfect. I'm planting, providing seed here, planting the seed that's been given to me and you guys are watering with it. it it's working out. But he never said anything about being successful. It's doing the labor. And you're rewarded for doing the labor. The success comes from God. He provides that. And we won't know exactly how successful we are in our individual ministries until we cross over to the other side and then we'll see it. <clears throat> for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. And another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds, and he goes on into the thing about the different work that we're doing, and then the work will be taken and everything. Je uh, Jesse was talking to me yesterday uh, about this very same scripture. No, no, I'll take that back. He was reading Galatians. Well, here's the same thing right here. Same thing as right here. But now let's go over to 2 Corinthians 9. He validates this. 2 Corinthians 9.10 says, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. See, I can't sow seed unless God provides me the seed to sow in the first place. What's the seed? The gospel. No one else can do the work unless God provides him the implements and the materials he needs to do the work. I can't build on this foundation, on what everybody else is building, this temple of God, unless I'm provided the materials to build them. So what I'm doing, and, and me, I'm nothing. It's God that's everything. Because God is the one that even provides the materials and provides the supplies and provides the increase afterwards. That's why he gets the glory, and I don't. That's why he gets the glory, and none of us don't. 
But there are a lot of people that, did, oh, you did that? Hey, that's re you did really good for the kingdom. No. I, I don't count myself as being that significant. Because there are a million people that can take my place in an instant. One of the greatest things I ever heard is that, and I forget the pastor's name. It's from quite a while back uh, that I, I listened to him. And he said, I, he, I forget where he said he was. But he said he was standing there and he was talking to some people outside of, of a church. It was somewhere up on the East Coast, I think. And he said somebody walked up out of nowhere, grabbed his hand and turned it over so his palm was up. And set a rock in his hand. And looked, he looked, looked at the rock and he looked at the guy. And the guy looked him in the eyes and said, be careful because God can replace you as pastor of this church with this rock. And he turned around and walked away. Now, he thought maybe that might have been an angel. Because he never saw the guy again and nobody knew who it was. But he said, that stuck with me. And I realized I need to pay very close attention to what I'm doing. And how I'm doing it. Because I can't do it unless God gives me what I need to do it. And if he gives me what I need, I need to be responsible with it. So the one who waters, sorry, the one who plants, irrelevant. The one who waters, irrelevant, because all of us plant and water. We're all working together as a unit. It's God, the one who provided us the stuff to plant and water with, who provides us the end result. So even though I may not know directly or specifically any people I've led to Christ, I do know that because I plant and others water, because I water when others plant, because even with this ministry, I still water. Because people come here and gain more and then and go wherever the Lord is leading them to go to, to share messages and preach. In the end, he'll provide the increase for it. In the end, I'll know. It's not relevant for me to know exactly who I'm leading. What's relevant is knowing that God is taking care of it. God is providing it. All I have to do is what he's given me to do. Here, take this and go plant. Here, take this and go water. Don't worry about what happens after that. Just go do it. Like I've told you guys before, there are times you may speak ten words to somebody and never, ever see them again. You may have a 15-minute conversation with someone and never, ever see them again. Will you ever know if your words had an effect? Will you ever know if your watering did anything or helped? Or even planting? You may not. There, that most people, you'll never know if, if it ever had a positive effect on them. But in the end, when we stand before the Lord, all will be revealed. And we'll see, hey, I remember you. You did get saved. Yes, you planted seed. Or yes, you watered it and it was amazing. But God came to me and showed me the truth. Amen. So it's not about me and you. It's about him. Because me and you can't do what we do unless he gives us the ability, unless he provides for us, unless he reveals to us what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. So if you think you're unsuccessful in, your, in what you're doing, in your pursuits, like a lot of people do, and so they start to try to step into ministries God doesn't, hasn't given them. And so they go into there and they fail because they're trying to do their own thing. If you think you're unsuccessful, you feel like you're failing, welcome to the club because we're all that way. <laughs> we all feel like that. We all feel like we've, we've messed up somewhere or we're not being very effective or we're not doing that. But I, I remember back at the very beginning of this, the Lord impressed upon me when I first started this ministry. Don't worry about how successful it is. Don't worry about what your videos sound like. Don't worry about those things like that. I'll take care of those things. You just do what I gave you to do. Just produce the stuff. Just plant the seeds. Just water the plants. I'll take care of everything else. So I don't worry about it. That's why I've only, I think I've only ever deleted three videos off this channel. And it was for exterior reasons. Maybe four. Everything else I've left, I've left here. Even stuff that I know I was wrong on that I've corrected later, even stuff that I know didn't come out very good. And some, some of them I've refilmed after the fact, but I left the other ones there 
Because I know God can still use that. And he will use that. It's faith. It's trust. It's believing. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's believing in him and trusting in his ability, not my own. Because my ability is useless. I mean, I, all I did was, day before yesterday, is I pulled up two pieces of plywood and put, like, I think five, five two-by-fours down. I really didn't move around that much. I was basically in one spot. That's that's it. And I am so, I'm in so much pain because of this disease. Yesterday, I didn't even hardly move. I couldn't hurt too much. Today, I'm going to attempt to finish it, but I'm still hurting. Sometimes it takes a couple days to recover from this stuff. But you know what? I'm not worried about it because I know he will provide the result. And the result will be a better back porch, a better deck. I'm not going to worry about my ability. He'll provide everything that I need. Like he always does. He's provided me the tools. He's provided me the hardware. You've seen how expensive deck screws are if you could go to Home Depot or Lowe's. It just so happens somebody gave me two massive, I'm not talking little little cardboard boxes, big plastic containers full of brand new screws. Years ago. He provides everything. He provides everything. All I have to do is move with it. Take the materials and do it. Do something with them. And he will make it work. And he has. And I can't. I can't pretend that I'm having a difference or, or making a difference or factor. Now, a lot of you guys will tell me that. Hey, you've made a great difference in my life. Hey, what you're saying. And that's wonderful. And I'm very happy that what I'm doing and I'm being successful at what I'm doing. But I always have to back up and humble myself and remember that it's not me doing it. It's him doing it. I just happen to be the vessel through which he's doing it. And it could be any of you guys could be sitting in the same spot I'm at right now doing the same thing. So I have to make my relevance way less and his relevance more. And I take joy in the ministry and knowing I don't have to worry about what the result is going to be because the result is going to be what he makes it to be. Which causes me to walk in faith and to glorify him and to give him the praise. Which is also what I'm supposed to do. It compounds on itself. So all I have to do is trust in him. Do what he gave me to do. Take the seed he gave me to plant and go plant it. Take the water he gave me to water with and go water the plants. Whatever job I end up doing, whatever position I end up taking. In this particular situation, I'm doing basically both. And then he will get in that person's heart. And provide the increase. And there will be people along the way who will water that will be, they'll meet them at a truck stop. And they'll have a, a three minute conversation in a parking lot of a truck stop. And it'll be water. And it'll cause that seed to sprout. And then they'll run into some people at a bread and breakfast, uh, uh, Airbnb, a bread and breakfast. Bread, a bed and breakfast. Why don't we keep saying bread? A bed and breakfast. And they'll have a conversation with the wonderful people that run it. And they'll be Christians. And there's more watering and the plant grows more. And then there's fertilizing and the plant grows more. And then they're at the bookstore. And they're looking for a particular book. And they catch this Bible. And the conviction hits. And they grab it. And they start reading it. And everything else is history. And none of those people on that person's path will have any knowledge that that person got saved until the Lord reveals it to them at the end. So, 
as we're doing what we're doing, as we're involved in our ministry, let us not ponder the failures. Let's not, you know, let's not be get caught up in what we do, but instead let us revel in what God is doing, what the Lord is doing in us and in them. And just do what he gave us to do and not worry about the result. And there are a lot of people who say, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Uh, no. I had somebody here a couple of years ago tell me, you know, well, you need to be a missionary. Where's that in the Bible? He says, to be, I can be a missionary right here. No, we got people going to Sri Lanka. You got to be a missionary. No. I am on medication. I'm taking, I think if I sat down and calculated it comes out to like $12,000 a month in medications or something like that. I don't remember what the cost of the, I know the one medication is really expensive. And I can't get those medications in those countries. No. I'm not, I do not have to be a, minister, a, a, a missionary. I can be a missionary right here. Because the mission fields here are ripe. Because not only are we preaching and planting seed with the unbeliever, but we're also watering and fertilizing the believer who's wandered away. Trimming back and pruning. God is pruning his children who have wandered away, those that still need work, those that still need to grow. And so not only are we planting seeds, bringing in new growth, but we're helping each other grow. You guys share stuff with me that helps me grow. I share stuff with you that helps you grow. It's all It all works together, and it's all God's garden. It's all God's field. And it, and it, it amazes me. And it encourages me to know that he has that level of control on it, that not to sit back and be lazy, but I don't have to worry. I don't have to stress. Am I doing this right? Is this going right? No, I still wonder. It, it, am I failing at this? I still wonder. That it bothers me still because I I want I love the Lord. I, I want to be successful for Him, but I know it doesn't matter because He's the one who's going to make it happen. He's the one who's going to do it. All I have to do is what He said to do: be a doer of the word. Because. Like 2 Corinthians says, God provides the seed. Otherwise, you couldn't sow. God provides the water. Otherwise, you couldn't water. Let us not get caught up in the world and the carnality and, and what, like 1 Corinthians says, and, and what man puts on as badges of honor. But instead, let us pay attention to what God's word is and put our eyes on him. Stop looking at ourselves like we're something. Instead, look at him like he's everything. Because he is everything. Jesus Christ is our everything. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name to give you the credit for everything we do because I can't do these things unless you empower me and supply me with what I need to do. them. I can't do these videos in the morning because unless you give me the strength. It took me longer than normal just to walk from the bed to the bathroom, just to get in the closet here and do this video. But you have, you know, I mean, my side is killing me right now. I can't even hardly lean over. But you have supercharged me to do this and stirred up the passion and the fire to do this and to share this. Because this is more important. You are more important. What I do isn't even on the radar versus what you've enabled me to do, the way you've enabled me to do it, because anybody else can do what I do. Anybody can. But you have given me the ability. You've given me the materials. You've strengthened me. You've given me the seed and the water to be able to go out and plant and water the, the plants, to, to get the garden going. But you're the one that provides the increase. You're the one that directs the paths. You're the one that puts people in each other's paths to strengthen each other. I know that's what happened at Denny's with Slim. I'd love to see him again, but it may not happen. 
that's okay because I know that what what we did that day you're going to use is make, to make a benefit. To, hopefully it'll grow that young man into somebody strong, strong in the faith and encouraged. And not look at this world that's beating him down, but instead look to you. So many others in my life. I look back and I see the things that I deem mistakes. But I know you can take those mistakes and turn them into something. Because the Bible says the, you bless the works of the hands of those you love. And I can't even recount all the times that I've seen it happen real time. In everything. I've walked up and touched cars, just popped hood on cars and closed them and people's vehicles run better. Well, that's not me. That's you. How can I say that I am something because of what I'm doing when you're the one that gave me the ability to do it in the first place? So the credit goes back to you. The salesman takes no credit or can't take any credit for the sales unless he has something to sell. So the credit goes back to the person who provides the saleable items. The mechanic can't be anything unless he has a car to fix and the tools to fix it with. Those have to be provided. But in this day and age, Father, we make ourselves out to be something that we're not. We take more credit than we should. How can we take any credit when it's not us doing it? Funny enough, we think we're something because we're out there. Where I got my patch in the field, and my patch that I've done is bigger than yours. And it's like, you don't even own the field. You need to get you need to you need to buy some of the field first. You don't even own the field. God owns the field. He gets the credit. It reminds me of an amazing joke that I've heard. A bunch of scientists got an appointment with God. We don't need you anymore, God, because we can do everything you can do. We can create life, we can repair human bodies, we can grow body parts. And he's like, Oh, really? So God takes them in in a flash to a pasture in the middle of a mountain range full of flowers beautiful beautiful flowers and God puts his hand up his finger up and to, to signify to them just one minute and scoops up a bunch of dirt and breathes life into it makes a man and breathes life into it and one of the scientists they look at each other and he reaches down and gets a handful of dirt and God says uh uh get your own dirt Those scientists can't do anything unless God provides them the material to do it. We can't do anything unless you provide us the materials to, to do it. I can't build on the temple with wood, hay, or stubble or gold, jewels, gold, silver, and jewels unless you provide the materials to build with. And then it's up to me to pay attention as to how I'm building. Like Corinthians says. And I love it. I love that it's that way because it takes everybody's bragging rights away. It takes everybody's pride away. It takes everybody's self-glorification away. And now we have to look to you. Father, I'm out of materials. I can't build anymore. Here you go. Thank you, Father. So in all things, you get glory. In all things, you get the praise. In all things, you get the thanksgiving. So we thank you for this word. <laughs> this word that helps us build with. This is building materials providing us this word never in history has have we had this full complete word and you provided other books that we can read that too that help us even more never in history have we had this until now why now because now is the time because the end is near well not near here all the math adds up and I'm not the only one seeing that. A lot of people are starting to realize. I can't make a date or say I know when. But I can say, you better be ready. Because it's coming sooner than later. 
if you wait one single day, you're making a mistake. Don't wait any days. Get saved. Because the seeds that were planted in you were not planted by someone who sowed. They were planted by God through someone he used to sow. The watering wasn't provided by the person who watered. It was provided by God who provided the water and sent them to water you. So our faith is not based in us or someone else. Someone else's faith is not based in someone else or us. It's all, it all comes from God. Father, you have provided these things. I can't help but give you glory because it all comes from you. And I know I can't do what I do unless you empower me and strengthen me to do it and provide, the, provide for me the materials to be able to do it, just like everybody else. I'm not above anybody. I'm just like everyone else. And I like it like that. I would rather have it that way. Because you are perfect. And you are in perfect control of all these things that happen. And that gives me great confidence. It gives me great peace. Knowing that no matter what happens, it's under your control. Knowing that your word says all things work for the good of those you love. You bless the works of the hands of those you love. So though, in my view, I may be a failure. But in your view, you're just getting started. Don't worry about failing. Just go do it. I'll take care of the rest. Okay. If we would learn to stop saying, I want to do this, I want to do that, or help me do this, help me do that, instead of just saying, yes, Lord, it would be so much easier and so much less stress. And you give those people that do that the truth, the real truth. And that's why we're so hated. That's why we're attacked so much, because we just looked at you and said, yes, Lord. And the other people are looking and they're like, hey, you're making us look bad. No, I'm just doing what he told me to do. And I cannot recount how many times in the past, the jobs that I've worked where I've been told that same thing. Just doing my job. Hey, you're making us look bad. I'm not making you look bad. You already looked bad because you don't want to do your job. I'm just doing my job. It's your fault, not mine. And there are so many people that are doing this. So many people that are walking their own path instead of walking the path you have laid before us. Father, help us stay on that path you've laid before us. Help us realize... It's not us, it's all you. It always has been you. That it would behoove us to lay our pride down and instead realize I can do nothing unless he strengthens me to do it. Your mercy and grace are immeasurable but I still thank you for them. Your great love cannot be, cannot be even possibly comprehended. I thank you for it. And your salvation is the most important thing. And I'm not even worthy to touch it. But I thank you for that too. And this ministry does not belong to me, is not mine, and I would be irresponsible to say anything more than that. It is all yours. So thank you for your mercy and grace and your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. Thank you for this ministry. That in this world and the way things are now, that I can reach out and plant seeds in people. That I can reach out and water seeds in people. That I can encourage. That I can strengthen. That I can help with a, a good word. That I can give scripture to help people understand. I can pray for people. And it has nothing to do with me or my abilities. It has all to do with you. And I didn't know that until you took away my abilities. So the things that happened in my past, the things that brought me to the place that I am now, they needed to happen in order to make me realize that I can't do it. It is only because of you that I am able to. So, Father, thank you for all those things that broke me down and all those things that you took away because it taught me to be more appreciative of what I have. 
In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for daily prayer. It's something to think about. It's something to consider. Is it really you that's doing anything, or is it him giving you the ability? See, when we realize that, we realize how much more successful we will be if we learn to acknowledge that he's the one doing it, not us. And and I, I have to say this. I cannot do this unless he gives me the ability, unless he gives me the material. Uh, guys, I literally, every day, and I'm not even making this up, within minutes of filming, I'm getting the inspiration for the video and the content I'm going to cover. This, the, the words he gives me are real time given. I don't prepare anything beforehand. And it's not a gift that I have. It's because he's providing every, every bit of it. And I like it that way. Because to me, it's more of a real message. It's more of a message from the heart. Not a prefab message. Not a pre-made message. A lot of people will disagree with that and say, well, we need to measure our words. Well, I've been led a different direction, I guess. I love it and I'm thankful for it. And I'm thankful for all of you because you guys have helped me do this by your kind words, by your scripture references, by your questions, you have helped. And we will never know how we've helped each other until we stand before the Lord and he reveals it to us. So I thank you too. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I love you very much. I'll see you in the next video.